Hi, I'm George. This is Photoshop Insert Image into another image. I'll be using this image here as our base image and then taking the girl from this here and inserting this into that base image and we'll end up with that. Now the first thing we need to do is just get rid of all this stuff in here. I'm going to delete all these layers that we don't need like that and I'll hit the trash can and it leaves us with just the background image. So here's our first image. Let's now open up our second image and I have mine up here in Open Recent. There we go. I'm just going to float this window and then drag that right on top of the other image just like that. And let's find a nice position for her. Just a little bit off of the top I think looks pretty good. Just about right there. That should work out fine. Let's just double check and that looks pretty good. Now I could use the subject select but I've had trouble with that. It doesn't do things exactly right. I actually tried it on here and it cut into the hair a little bit and it cut into the sleeve a little bit and a little bit over here that I didn't want. And it was really next to impossible to fix that. So I'll use the old tried and true technique, which always works. And that's to grab the lasso tool. And then I'll make a careful selection right around just outside of the figure. I'm not going to go into the figure. I won't be touching any edge, but just outside and just work your way around and make a nice little lasso right around the figure. And when you get to the bottom, you can go off just down below like that and straight across the bottom and then back up this side. This doesn't need to be perfect. doesn't need to be great. Just kind of take your time and work right around the image. And again, just stay just outside. That's all you have to do around the top and then right back to the start. There we go. Here's our basic selection. Let's now grab select the mask button is right here. If you don't see that, you'll also find it under the select menu and select a mask right there. But we'll use the button. Here it is. Now I like working with the overlay. You might see the onion skin when you first do this or the marching ants. I happen to like the overlay. This is kind of a nice red color in here. I also like getting my brush size just a little bit larger than the gap that I have in there. And it's too big right now. I'll use the left bracket key right here and just bring it down just a little bit. And then just brush right over that space, just overlapping into the red area and then into the figure. Now, don't worry if it looks a little bit weird. Photoshop tends to fix things. There we go. I fixed that just fine. It always goes back and checks everything as you're doing this. I like working in just little steps like that and checking the progress. And then just a little more. There we go. Finish off right down here. And then do the opposite side. Now on here, I try to not get very far into the hair with the brush. Let's kind of go right against the edge of the hair, just a little ways into the hair. That seems to give the best results and doesn't tend to cut into the hair too much, which sometimes happens if you use a brush that's too large or if you push the center further in. So do it right in here and then right along that shoulder. There you go. And that's coming out much better than my test that I did with the select subject that really didn't do a perfect job and this is giving me a perfect job which is what I want. Okay straight down to the bottom and that finishes off that selection. It's a little bit soft right down here. We can check that that may or may not show on the final so we'll see how that goes. Everything else looks perfect. Don't need to do anything in here. Sometimes I'll give the edge detection a little bit of a radius boost in here. I may do a little bit on smoothing. In this case I didn't need to do anything. It looks just perfect. That's fine. Okay, let's so come down here where it says Output 2, and I'll change this to a new layer with a layer mask. What that does is it saves the original without touching the original and gives me a brand new layer. And then I have that original down here as a safety. And that all looks fine. I have no problem there. The next thing we need to do now is to blend this person in. And if you look at the background picture, this tends to be the case for most nighttime pictures. They are more contrasty and they are more saturated on their color. So you need to fix both of those things, the contrast and the saturation. Now for the contrast, let's click on our layer right here. There we go. And I'm going to put an adjustment layer above this one. Go up here to Layer, New Adjustment Layer, and let's do Levels. Where it says Use Previous Layer, just check that. Choose OK. And here's our Levels Control right-hand side. We want the top graph in here. Now to increase your contrast, you bring your blacks and your whites in a little bit. So I'll bring the blacks in, make the blacks a bit darker, and bring it until it looks pretty good. Now be careful on the blacks. If you go too far, it begins to block up like that, so don't go too far on that. You want to get your darkest darks down to a good black, 
but not much further than that. The real blackened hair is in her eyes. So anything else is going to block up. We'll fix the bottom of that jacket on a second pass. We're going to put it right about here. I think looking at her face, that looks just about right. And let's boost our contrast by pulling the lights in just a little bit. I also find if you rock back and forth like this, it gives you a much better judge of things. You know, go back and forth and get a good, good sense. And I think right around in here is looking pretty good on that. Okay. That takes care of our contrast level. So looks much more like she is lit by a street light, possibly. Matches the background. Let's now adjust our colors in here a little bit. I want it to be more vibrant. Nothing much in the colors for her jacket and shirt, but we have the colors in her hair and her face. And those are your yellows and your reds. So let's bring in a new adjustment layer for that. Layer, come down to new adjustment layer. This time we'll go down here to hue saturation. Again, check that checkbox, choose OK, and here we go. Let's not bother with the master color. Let's go right here to the yellows. And we'll first start off by boosting our yellows just a bit. And again, if you go back and forth like this, you can kind of see how it's going. If it's down here, it's way too far. But right around here, it looks like the high 40s. That's pretty good. So I think that's nice on our yellows. And then let's switch down here to our reds. Same idea. We'll just boost our saturation on the reds. And again, I'm going to go back and forth. Okay, right about here, it gets too much. So it's below the 30 level. So get up close to that, but not quite. And I'm thinking right about in here looks pretty good. About plus 24 increases our color saturation in there without really messing things up. Now the nice thing about using the hue saturation is we can limit it to just the saturation and just the one color range that we want to have right there. Okay, looking pretty good. Now the last thing I want to do is to darken down the bottom part of her jacket and shirt in here. It should be fading out to a pretty dark. If she's being lit by a spot of light, it's going to be going darker around down in here. So for that, let's go over here and grab this tool. This is the burn tool. You can see it's right there. There's a size. That's not too bad for our size. I have mine set here. We want to be darkening down our shadows. That's our dark part. Exposure of 50% looks pretty good. It's a soft edge brush. That's important on this. And then come down here. You want to be on the photo side of that layer. And then just brush into here a little bit. Kind of follow where the darks are. And just darken things down just a bit in those dark areas. So it just fades out into the darkness. And that looks pretty good right there. So there we go. We've just inserted one image into another image. Now make sure you hit that like button and subscribe and check out my channel for a bunch more videos. And I'll see you next time.